everybody to the pitch night. You're in for a treat. So why don't you all come a little closer? Come a little closer. Not right there, I'm going to sit there. <laughs> come up, come up a little closer so you can see and hear better. Give your support to the people that are going to be pitching tonight. All right, there's a great hub in the room tonight. Sounds like you're all fired up. Up the back, up the back, come on. Hey, hello. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's getting close to having some of the pitchers uh, do their thing. So before we, uh, while we're getting ready for the people who are up the back and thinking of coming down to indulge and enjoy the evening and listen to the speakers, that would be awesome. So we'll just um, hold up for a second. There we go. I think that we're all ready to go. So I'm going to hand over to Atul so that you can uh, kick off the speakers. Here we are. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Linda. That's Linda from uh, what's what's your Sympatico. It's, you can learn how to pitch from her. She, she, she told me how she'll teach me how to quieten you guys down. So thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for that, uh, Linda. Okay, my name is Atula. I'm the lead organizer of Melbourne Silicon Beach. Those of you who have been around for a while would know that I stepped down last December and handed over to Max to uh, lead the Silicon Beach. But uh, yeah, because last December I felt that. You know, I've given enough and there was nothing more to give. It's, it's quite hard running an uh, organization or community like this. Can everyone here at the back? Can everyone hear? Okay. So, but I took over back again in uh, last, uh, last month because sponsors finally started coming in. We've got a, quite a number of sponsors, so I thought, let's get serious and we need to take this to the next level, okay? Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land on which we have this meetup, the Warantari people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to, the, to their elders past and present. present. And also I need to thank the venue, Royal Melbourne Hotel. They, every month, for the last four years, I think it's even before I took over, they have been hosting Melbourne Silicon Beach drinks, as it was known, uh, absolutely free of charge, and in the hope that you buy, you guys buy enough drinks. So, please do so. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. Drink responsibly. You can. They do sell non-alcoholic drinks. So, uh, thanks to Royal Melbourne Hotel, and thanks to our sponsors and partners. We can hold this. I'm not going to talk much, we're going to keep it really short so because we know that you guys want to get back to networking, that is the real uh, essence of this meetup. But we do have the pictures which we introduced about a year ago and has got quite popular and we now have 8,533 members because, yep. Yes, it is mainly because of the pictures. Most of you told me today that you've seen the video and Hajit is videoing. So you have to, uh, thanks to Hajit, you've got volunteers and then Alexa here, John here, and Cullen somewhere hiding, who's back after a long time, is doing Silicon Beach Radio, the podcast. All of them make this happen, so it's just not few people, it is a team that is behind. And we are open to volunteers. We welcome anyone to come and volunteer with us. Join our Slack channel. I'll put the link up there. It goes up on your mail outs as well. Keep an eye on the mail outs. And uh, yeah, join us in making. We are, we are really, we've got a law firm uh, sponsoring our food tonight. Simbisa Law, they'll talk to you in a little while. So we are talking to them about forming Silicon Beach as a not-for-profit company, uh, Silicon Beach Australia, so we can connect all the Silicon Beaches around the country and create a, a properly organized, structured uh, network of communities which can be the world's alternative to Silicon Valley. So we are very dreaming big and we need you on the journey. Thank you for being here. Okay, without further ado, we'll start with first with the sponsors' pictures. So I'll start with Simbisa Law. 
which is actually the other ones oh. paying for your food tonight. So big round of applause for Sikisar Hall. Good evening, everybody. How are you all? Very well, thank you. It's good. So my name is Rugare, Rugare Gerbo, and I'm the co-founder of Simbisa Law. So last month you'd have met Luke Gallia, my, my co-founder and business partner who's over there. Do you want to just raise your hand? Um, so it's a real privilege to be here tonight and, you know, meeting you for the first time and people who are dedicated to actually growing and scaling your businesses. So I want to just start with a bit of a story regarding why we actually created Simbisa Law and why we're here. So I'm from Zimbabwe originally, I grew up in Zimbabwe, and I came to Australia by myself when I was 16 years old with literally 325 US dollars. And I had a vision to get an education for myself, and that's all I had, and I had no idea on how I was going to fill on that. But I took the step, the risk, and came to Australia, a whole different culture, a whole different world. And I found a way each year to um, raise the hundred thousand dollars to be able to go to university and get and become a lawyer. So you could say that my first capital raise was when I was 18 years old to actually discover what it's going to take to fulfill on a vision, and I made that happen. Before I, I was I was a very shy person. I would never be able to speak like this, and I was completely terrified of people and particularly heterosexual men because I'm a gay, flamboyant African. So. <laughs> I'm literally best friends with all the women in this room and avoid all the men. <laughs> now I can be with any kind of person, any person literally, because of taking myself out of my comfort zone to connect with people. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is then, of course, you know, people bringing their ideas to life and also making those dreams come a reality. What we have found in the startup community is that many people do not have their access to astute um, trusted advisory services. So many people actually go out starting a business thinking that they know it all and then they come against a barrier and then they're working hard, they're scared to share with their family what they're really dealing with. But all of that could really be avoided by actually having the proper advice. So we have really created some business law which means to empower and to strengthen to be part of uh, the startup ecosystem. Um, so that you build sustainable, purpose-driven businesses. So that's why, that's why we exist. So what we've been doing right now, we've been in talks with um, Melbourne City and Beach to actually create an access for the whole community to have that availability. So we are, from next week onwards, creating what we call a power hour. So there's going to be an opportunity for people to come on a, a Skype call, a Zoom call, um, a webinar where you can ask any questions regarding what you're dealing with. Because what we also find is that many startups are dealing with the same thing. So it's going to be a great opportunity for you to bring some of your questions and we'll be able to have a conversation regarding that. And then if we, you need to explore that further with us off um, those webinars, we'll be able to do that. So starting next Friday, um, Atula will be sending out a link to the whole community where we're going to have um, some Visa Power Hour. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks, uh, yeah, I'll send a mail out out, keep an eye out for the mail outs the webinar. And, uh, and please give Simbisa Law and Rogero and Luke who's here another round of applause for the food, the fabulous food. It's great to have so many sponsors coming in and, uh, it's, uh, and we have another uh, sponsor from uh, Wade Institute, which is the Melbourne University of Melbourne's Masters in uh, Entrepreneurship. There's Georgia here. Hi everyone. Uh, I didn't supply any of the food. I only bought postcards, so next time I'm going to have to up the game. Sorry. Uh, so I'm Georgia McDonald. I'm the General Master at the Wade Institute at the University of Melbourne. Uh, we deliver the University's Master of Entrepreneurship. Had this great conversation with a fella out in the audience before, and he's like, oh, isn't that an oxymoron? You know, you can't teach entrepreneurship. And I say bullshit to that. I think uh, I can't teach appetite for risk, I can't teach your appetite for hard work, but all of that other thinky stuff, we can teach. 
And so what we do is take 40 really high potential entrepreneurs into the program every year, one intake every year. We teach them high level master's degree skills. Everyone is building a startup while they're with us and we plug them into our network of uh, investors, of lawyers, of advisors and of people who are going to be able to help you along the way. We give away uh, about $400,000 in scholarships and financial assistance every year. And when you think of a cohort size of 40, that's a pretty good hit rate. Uh, so if you're interested in being one of those 40, uh, check out one of those postcards, come to one of our events, uh, look up our website. I do office hours every Thursday. You can come in and see me anytime. Uh, I'd love to talk to you if you, uh, if you think you want to be one of those people. Uh, go to the website, uh, w's, uh, waveinstitute.org.au. Thanks, Hicks. Thank you. I think there's a question. Where is it starting? When's the intake? Oh, when's the intake? Yeah. Intake once a year in February. Uh, next round of applications close 30th of November. We've got our showcase pitch night on 26th of October if you want to come and see what the students did this year. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Georgia. I'm, I'm sure all the details are on the website. Now, for those of you who don't know who are here for the first time, there are a lot of first timers. We do put the video up on uh, on Silicon News, which is the medium site, and I'll send you a mail out with the link. And in that video, we outline at which point each pitch is at, so you can go directly to that pitch and also the web link to the website, so you can easily find. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me at the back? Can you please not talk at the back? Shh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, someone told me don't do shoe, that's very rude. But if you keep on talking, I'm going to shoe you. <laughs> and uh, okay, next uh, we have a sponsor from Chat Metrics. Terry from Chat Metrics is somewhere here. Thank you. Hi, my name's Terry Wilson and my business is Chatmetrics. We're really delighted to be sponsoring Silicon Beach and Melbourne here. Our focus really is on generating leads for your business. We have a managed live chat service. I'm sure everybody's heard about live chat and all the buzz around bots. Um, we sort of provide the human interaction on your website. So much of the traffic on website is wasted these days. Uh, we find that with the human interaction that we're actually able to uh, convert a lot more of that traffic into good leads. It's interesting that a lot of our uh, people that have been chatting with us over the last six months have actually started to uh, qualify up front whether they're speaking to a real person or whether it's bot or AI. Uh, it's just a, an interesting date for the last six months. But look, we're proud to be sponsored for Silicon Beach. From our perspective, um, the startup community uh, is the area that can probably really need to get the most out of the website traffic, uh, and that's what we aim to do. So if anybody's got any questions, I'm happy to chat to you later on through the night. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, the Melbourne Silicon Beach website, we took it down a few months ago because there was no one to update it and we were quite all right with the Meetup website. But uh, now that Terry has offered chat services on the Silicon Beach website, we'll put the website back up. Maybe not for Melbourne Silicon Beach, we might put up for Silicon Beach Australia so that it can be the entry point to the Australian startup ecosystem. So, it's really exciting. So, any of the other sponsors here? Are there anyone from SproutX? If there's no one from SproutX, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about SproutX. It's an ag agri-tech startup accelerator and they do have uh, applications. They're taking in applications for the next cohort where all the information is on the website. They are sponsoring us and uh, they have special events, which I think we had one. There's another event coming up, it will be on the meetup page. And the other sponsor is Interactive. Anyone here from Interactive? Uh, they're a cloud source SaaS uh, marketplace. You can get the details up on the website. Um, okay, now we go on to the partners now. There's a we, we are partnering with a very exciting concept, co-working concept called Two Space that uh, converts unused uh, space in restaurants to co-working spaces so you can get the uh, co-working very affordably. 
and we'll be doing events with them to talk about talk more about Two Space and the upcoming event. There's Bill here from Two Space. Everyone, awesome to be here. Um, great to be partnering with uh, Melbourne Silicon Beach. Uh, it's really yeah, amazing to see so many people here. I've been coming to these events for a long time. Great place to start your journey in entrepreneurship. Hence, we are um, yeah, so stoked to be on board with Melbourne Silicon Beach because our values align so much. Um, so what we do, long story short, we partner with restaurants that are closing today. Can be any type of space, but restaurants are working really well for us at the moment. Uh, what this means is um, that we can offer co-working space very uh, affordably, as well as having a network so our members can work from any of the spaces. To give you an idea, um, our membership starts $69 a month. And it's awesome because people can now work from anywhere um, different than their homes, cafe or library, which essentially sucks, excuse my language, uh, to start your journey uh, from. Um, so we are offering them a productive space with uh, the community, uh, like-minded entrepreneurs, freelancers, all some people around them to motivate them and feed up that energy, which is so important. Um, as um, Athula was saying, we've got um, a really interesting, uh, awesome event coming up. So we're just um, one year old, one year old, and um, we've got Pitch to Space coming up. So it's our biggest pitch event. Um, Melbourne Silicon Beach are community partners for this event, and essentially the winners will take home. Um, 12 month of co-working from uh, at any of our locations, as well as Academy XI prizes, uh, which is four grand, four grand worth of courses and a bunch of really cool other perks. So don't miss out. It will be announced to Melbourne Super Beach. It will be official meetup. So you will find out. And uh, please join us for this big event. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. I think that do you have two spaces in Melbourne, or just yeah, with partnership. Cider House and another one. In Peran. In okay. Uh, I'll put the links to the Two Space website as well as the Pitch to Space event, which is on the October 25th, in partnership with so many other communities, including Startup Victoria and Silicon Beach. It's the first time that Silicon Beach and Startup Victoria are partnering in one event. So, just to prove to you that we are not competing, we are collaborating to build the ecosystem up. It's very, very important. Okay, I think that's it from partners and sponsors. Uh, there's another partner that's coming on as an education partner. They are not here, but I need to talk to you about them. It's Academy XI. They are basically uh, a Sydney-based uh, education startup, but now they are opening up in Melbourne. And their specialty is things like artificial uh, intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, user experience and things like that. So very interesting uh, uh, courses are there. We will put them up on Silicon School, which is another section in Silicon News. Um, and also another partner, Blockchain Center, which is helping us with uh, co-working space for the organizers, as well as uh, education on blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency. There will be some events that will be um, uh, put up on the meetup page. Okay, now we are ready to go to 60 second pitches, starting with uh, NAV. I don't have the name here, but who's doing it? Okay. Introduce yourself and... Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marat. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marat. And um, I'm founder of uh, Adevi. So Adevi is a graphical user interface and development assistant. That's what we are targeting from our system. Systems. And uh, so in general, yeah, well, there's a. Okay. So, everyone. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of people who are thinking of developing different software, and software usually sometimes it includes to talk about the vision, get the requirements, structure them properly, and generate the prototype, uh, develop graphical user interface, and develop some code that will be part of your software. What we're trying to do is basically with machine learning all this that targets a lot of different technology 
and uh, after make some of the processes. We are a development company, we've been in the market for the last seven years, and we started this project to improve the processes that we've been dealing with. So, we, um, eventually, what we are trying to do is uh, generic graphical user interface uh, with user experience in mind and also something that will be generated to implement the system. We don't have our uh, presentation that didn't come on board, so it's very. I didn't take any notes to speech today, to, uh, to talk today. So um, that's kind of in general what we are doing. <laughs> and um, um, yeah, so uh, we. Well, the system is actually we are trying to launch already early in December with me mobile product, and um, yeah, so. That's kind of what we're doing. Thanks, man. Okay, uh, yeah, he sent me a, a slide share link which actually didn't work, but I will put the link up there on uh, Silicon News. Okay, the presentation didn't quite work. Uh, okay, the next pitch is from Chuck. Thank you. G'day guys, my name is Taylor and I'm the founder over at Chug. If you've ever been to any of Melbourne's most popular restaurants, bars or pubs, you'll know that it can be quite expensive to have a good time out. Even just buying just a couple of drinks can put a pretty hefty dent in your wallet. Well, what if you could go out and experience just as much, but for half the cost? Enter Chug. Chug is an online search engine that allows users to search for food and drink specials at the city's best venues. You want a beer in the CBD on a Thursday? Well, it's there. Head along to Miss Collins for $5 beers. Maybe you want a cocktail on a Sunday in Fitzroy? It's there too. Head along to Polly, a beautiful cocktail lounge, and enjoy $12 featured cocktails. Maybe after this very event, you want to get some food in Collingwood. Well, head along to Mr. Scruff's, enjoy their entire menu for half price. By allowing users to find food and drink specials, we allow them to discover more of Melbourne. We launched late 2015, and in our first 12 months, welcomed a little over 100,000 users. In 2017 alone, we're on track to welcome over 200,000 users. At the moment, we're purely a web platform, and we want to expand with both an iOS app and an Android app. If you're a developer who has interest uh, and experience in both those fields, I'd love to chat to you. I'm open to both giving you money uh, or bringing you on as a co-founder. Thank you. Okay, next one is a wallet, F6S. Hello, I'm Marvin. I'm from Berlin and I uh, started there last year with my startup because I had way too many things in my pockets and they were all separated. <laughs> On the one hand, I had way too many cards to fit in my wallet and even worse, headphones. Most of you know this problem very well. When you get them out of your pocket, they always look like this. So I developed a wallet. It's a hard case wallet which fits in up to eight cards and notes in a main compartment held in place by an elastic band. Um, then you have this unique feature of putting your earphones in, and under the cards there's a second hidden compartment for um, like a few coins or a spare key. Um, it, the current version only takes the uh, Apple headphones, but uh, works as well with the um, audio jack connector and the lightning connector. Here you can see the latest prototype. It comes in gray as well as black. And you can combine it with several color options for the elastic band. The um, case is 3D printed on a modern industrial 3D printer, which makes it uh, light, small, flexible, and strong at the same time. Um, it sells first on Kickstarter in a few weeks, probably at the end of November. And until then, 
Um, I will be happy if you um, follow us on Facebook, a.wallin.berlin. And if you have any further questions, um, I'm happy to meet you afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, we put the links up there. Happy to support your Kickstarter campaign. Just when the campaign launches, send, send us a link and we'll uh, spread it around. Okay, the next is Expert Easy. Hello, my name is Darren, and uh, have you ever wanted to find a plumber? or maybe an automotive company, and you phone them and they don't answer the phone. How annoying. Well, come to a nice website like this, and you can then enter what you want and get free quotes that are competitive from those providers. So it's a services marketplace, and it's not very unique. There's a lot of companies that have done this already. Uh, then multi-million dollar companies of course, it's a billion dollar market, so or more than a billion dollars, uh, multi-billion dollars. So, hence why there's a lot of competition. There are some things that are unique, I won't go into that and bore you, but um, it, is, it is a full functioning platform. It just needs a big fat wad of cash to compete. <laughs> so if you have a big fat wad of cash, please come and see me afterwards. Uh, also, if, you, if you'd like to get on board for shares and not be paid until we get that big fat wad of cash, then also come and see me afterwards. If you'd like to find a lawnmower company, there's lots of those on there already. Um, so we've hit, you know, we've got quite a, pe a lot of people signed up, so you can do that. Or you can like the Facebook page. Um, that would be great. Um, yeah. Is there any more time? <laughs> To the point, finding pitch, that's what we want. And basically what we want is what's the problem you are solving and what's the who you are and uh, what else, John, and what you are asked. Yeah, that's, that's very important. And, and you are very clear on that. His ask is a big fat word of cash. <laughs> Can't get clearer than that. Okay. Oh, this is John, one of our organizers. Myself. Yeah. Uh, got published. G'day guys, um, my name's John, I'm the, the founder and CEO of Shippies. And Shippies is a, a rostering solution for companies that love to take care of their staff. So the problem we're solving is the issue where businesses at scale have a lot of problems uh, building and communicating shift schedules to their teams. So what we do is we flip the problem on its head. We ask for the staff to be involved in the roster planning process first nominating times that they prefer to work the shifts and pick up extra shifts as well. And then we use that process to build uh, a biased shift that works for everybody. So we take into account companies' EBAs and their planning requirements, and we build the shift based on staff preferences. So at the moment, we're, um, we're working out of the Team Square space uh, as part of Blue Chili alumni. We've been uh, in business for about uh, nine months now. We've got our MVP out in the market, and last night, we were fortunate enough to uh, win a space at uh, 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 Collective Cubes in uh, Cremorne um, as part of the startup fit pitch for a spot competition. So uh, we've got a small amount of investment, we've got uh, an MVP with a big client. What I'm really looking for tonight is to be in contact with people who are technically minded. I'm looking for a tech co-founder. I've got a, a technical background myself but in infrastructure and ops. I'm looking for some people who've got some full stack experience, especially Java developers as well. So we've got a, a really interesting product. We've got um, uh, a lot of traction and interest from the market. We're at the stage now where we're trying to build that product out and uh, get it in people's hands. So uh, if you'd like to come and uh, talk to me, I'd be uh, more than pleased to talk to you a little bit more about what we do and where our vision is. And if you think you can work with me, um, that's the first step. Come up and say hello and we'll go from there. Thanks very much. That reminds me that I need to uh, fix something that uh, we started quite recently in Silicon News. So, uh, just give me a second. Started something called Silicon Jobs, which is... Okay, 
for you to put in the jobs that you have or even if you are looking at, now this is the Silicon News site, it has, uh, the address is medium.com forward slash Silicon News. Now this is fairly new. Uh, what we hope to do is allow you to have a platform where you can uh, put in your, uh, if you are looking for someone, take co-founder or techie or graphic designer or, or app developer or something, you can put your job up there. And, uh, and also if you are available, you are looking for work, you can put yourself up there as well. It's very early days, but uh, yeah, join us on our Slack channel. I'll put the link to the Slack channel as well. And uh, Silicon School is here as well. And Silicon Calendar is about all the events that are happening in Melbourne. We want to extend it to the rest of the cities as well. That's a brief segue. Um, let me go into the pictures. Now, who's doing tier one? I am. Simon, is that right? Yes, indeed. All right. Okay. Okay, life is sweet when it's a bit strange, which is the story of my life. Uh, next slide. Basically, I think it qualifies. Uh, we are two million percent up on our investment. Right now, we have no debts. We have money in the bank. We have assets in excess of two billion dollars between myself and my partner. And by the time we've, we've done all the financials, we'll have market cap of $10 billion when we list on NASDAQ next year. And we're an overnight success. It started in 1999. It was a very, very long sleep. So click again. So I've done a whole lot of things. Exotic tropical fruits, keep clicking, just don't stop. What we're doing is tier one. And what it is, is many of you may have known that Telstra wanted to set up the third telecommunications company in the Philippines. They did not succeed. They dumped a lot of money trying to do it, and they were going to put a billion dollars into setting it up. Myself and my partner are the third telecommunications carrier in the Philippines. And how did we do that? Through social enterprise and through innovation. Now, how do you get right to the bottom of the pyramid? I'm going to have to get you to hold these bits up. Yep. <laughs> this will be the first telecommunications company in the world that sees communications as a human right. We will not be charging for voice. We will not be charging for text. And we will not be charging for data. We've got our first rollout happening in Cotabato City in, uh, in Mindanao and it'll be finished uh, week after next. We're taking Cotabato City from 0.8 um, MPBS to 46, second only to Japan in all of Asia, much faster than Australia, and we're not charging anything. Now, how do you do that? Okay. This is a uh, page gold solar light. We're manufacturing those in the Philippines. What that then enables you to do is to replace a kerosene lamp in a small hut and you're able to also charge up your light, solar power, your phone I should say, solar power. Okay? We also manufacture these phones. We'll have the first blockchain enabled phone on the planet. We've already got it worked. The, the specifications and architecture done for that. The communications is not where the money is. The money is in sponsored advertising and financial inclusion, creating uh, a cryptocurrency for people. So we're changing the meaning of money. It is as simple as that. And what it is, is people ask me, what's your dream? I will tell you right now, I do not have a dream. <laughs> a dream has me and has had all my life. And the dream is, is, <laughs> inclusion of people and respect for the planet and nature. It's a dream that I had when I was tramping around in the Dandenong Mountains as a child. I want to have that dream for my children. So the dream has me. I dream 
nothing at all. The dreams hold me. I'm captive to my dreams. So that's what we're doing. So okay. What's your ask? that's it. Uh, I want to find people who are interested in, in terms of tech and also watch this space. As soon as we're listing on NASDAQ, you, want to, you might want to get some shares. We'll be list, we're simultaneously listing on NASDAQ February next year on the main board. We're doing an ICO uh, in the next 60 days and we're also doing a reverse takeover of a company in the Philippines in 60, in 60 days as well. So uh, there's plenty of opportunities for people to play and with a 2 million percent increase on the capital that we invested, we had some early investors who own about 1% but they, they're very, very happy. We've outperformed anything that they've ever invested in before. We've outperformed Bitcoin, we've outperformed real estate, all sorts of stuff. And like I say, social enterprise in the new millennium will win every time. Thanks, Alexa, for being the human forest. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Okay, uh, we are always happy to support social enterprises. So Silicon Beach is about making a difference in the world, and uh, especially we don't have enough startups in the social innovation, social enterprise space. So uh, we'll be we'll be having programs to support that, especially. Uh, We'll be watching that space, Simon. Okay, I okay. want to just offer something. I'm just um, I'm purchasing a uh, um, safari lodge in, in Tanzania uh, in February next year. All right? Okay, forewarned, your next event, I want to auction a stay in my safari lodge, middle of next year, get away for the winter, two weeks, and I want an auction. And I want to put that money into a project that you nominate because you understand Africa better than anyone else. Thank you. Good to hear. So I think, okay, we get on with the Peter. Okay, next is Felipe. Who who's to Unibase? Ah, okay. Great. Okay. Hi, Felipe. Uh, I'm not sure my slides are up there, but I happen to take an old-fashioned copy before I arrive. My name is Rick Marshall. I'm the designer and builder of Unibase. This has been a 40 year project. Um, and in that time, I've also designed and built many, many large back office applications. I'm a researcher in semantics, mathematics, and computer science, and an expert in many fields. Uh, you can see the slides later, I'll tell you. But yeah, I put the link to the slides there. I'm also the founder of Zenucom. Zenucom is a vehicle that I've used to commercialize the products. We build highly customised advanced applications for people. We provide end user support services, hosted applications, and of course, it's the owner of the IP in both Unibase and all of the applications. The opportunity that we're looking at at the moment is for someone to back a technology that can change the fundamentals of how applications are written and built. The technology itself is mature, as I said, some 40 odd years used to build a large number of large applications. And the next phase of what we're doing is to sign up startups to build the back ends. We want to replace the current clumsy web practices for building things and explore some new revenue streams with those startups. So the features for a startup that we we have available are hosted applications, a prototyping application, significantly simplified development, a very high speed database, some two orders of magnitude faster than the commercial databases you're using at the moment. An AI engine to deliver some very advanced features. We have support for sessions, multi-user, interlocking. We're naturally multi-tenant without the complications of Docker, Kubernetes, VMs, etc. So if you're a startup, what we're offering is training, support, hosting for your, the back end of your application. And we're going to do this either by charging one of three ways, dollars per month for the users when you start putting users on, a pay for service up front, or 
a small percentage of your startup if you think it's that good and we agree with you. If you're a, an angel investor or a VC, we're also looking for strategic partner in what we're doing. We're looking for an investor director or two. We're looking for help with our marketing, our expansion, the development of our add-on services. And we're looking to value our company based on the intellectual property that we're developing rather than anything else. I've talked before to some people here and I can talk to you later about that, but the value for Australia, future, is in the value of your IP, not the turnover and profits of your company. That's how they do it overseas and that's how we should be doing it here. Just a couple of quick stats on the kind of applications you can build and then I'll leave you to keep going. Our retail back office, as an indication, has 396 tables, 1,349 reports, 554 forms, 315 scripts, and 1,631 rules. This can all be managed with our product by one person. That one person can also develop and change the product live while the application is being used. Um, there's a few others. The very biggest one is a large ERP system we built, which is about 10 times that size in the different statistics. Yes, I'm going to stop. The, the slides will show you the features and so on of the product and what you can look forward to if you come on board to use it. Thank you for your time. I put the links up there and you can send the slide uh, to me, slide show to me so you can do that uh, that way. We're trying to, we say, six, we say 90 second pictures but we are not really strict on the timing because, yeah, we have to be. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next one is Kai, I think. Um, try to keep it 90 seconds. Perhaps. Yeah. Okay, yeah, please start. You can see up there. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Kai, and I'm the founder of PartyOps.com, which is a social web demo. I told everybody about it last time. Uh, today I want to talk about GBD Wing, which is the world's smallest laptop PC, which is running Windows 10. It's got a full keyboard and uh, D-pad joysticks. Uh, it's got an Intel Cherry 12 processor, which can run like heaps of games, PC games like Steam games, Dota 2. Uh, and CSGO and uh, it can run emulators so you can play PS2 games, Xbox games, uh, G G GBA games, Game Boy and Nintendo games. So and you can also use it for work like programming, word processing, video editing and it fits on my hand, on the palms of my hand and it'll fit in my pocket. Sorry, I, didn't, I don't have one with me today. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, no one is selling them in Australia, in retail stores. They only sell it online. So there's a big opportunity to get into the, this business. I can get the wholesale price directly from the producer, the company, I've talked to them. And I can get a wholesale price. What I'm looking for now is investors to join me to get a wholesale price products and sell them in computer shops, which I already talked to the boss. I can sell this there rent free or with a very little rent. We can be the beer gates of Australia. I wanted to say Steve Jobs, but it's Windows, so I said <laughs> Bill Gates. <laughs> we can, this, um, yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. They've got 535% of their funding, so they've got five times the money they want, I think. Yep. Thanks, Kai. 
Okay, Parker Public Relations. Wendy. Thank you. Do you like no, I'm not. Um, hi everyone, I'm Wendy Parker. I've been delivering done for youth publicity and um, thought leadership for the past two decades plus. In recent times, I've had young entrepreneurs, startups and small businesses say to me, can you teach us how to do it? So this has actually resulted in me developing a program specifically directed at DIY people. Um, firstly, what is thought leadership? This is being the acknowledged go-to person for your knowledge, your expertise and your opinions. In some instances, it's about... Um, sorry, is this popping a lot? Yes. Can you pop me okay? Yes. Pardon? Hold it down. Is that better? Um, in other instances, it's about being an acknowledged disruptor, um, a person who's looking at changing the industry for the better, and looking at developing a following in the process. Now, what are the benefits of being a thought leader? It's really about building your status um, and recognition as a person who has knowledge that others don't have. It's also about being more appealing to journalists, investors, um, probably opening yourself up to many more collaborations, um, invitations to join boards, become part of industry commissions. Now, um, Silicon Beach has very kindly offered for me to do a free introductory session for you. So do keep a look out in um, Silicon Beach um, mailings. Um, for those of you who want to jump the gun, more than happy to provide thought leadership coaching ahead of time. Um, my um, contact details, parkerpublicrelations.com.au. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Yeah, I'll put the link up there and uh, talking of thought leadership, people people tell me that I'm a thought leader, but I don't know shit, so tell <laughs> <laughs> me about it. So uh, yeah, if that's all the pictures that we have got pre-ordered, Alex has sent me a thing. It's a business who's doing business video dot com dot au. Is it you? No, it's uh, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll take the size up to start. Hello everyone, my name is Harry. It's great to be in a room full of people who have great ideas and uh, trying to make this world a better place with your ideas. It's fantastic. Anyway, um, I do videos for businesses. My goal is to usually simplify your idea. How many times do you find this challenging? Businesses these days are having problem in explaining the products and services in a simple way, in a shortest possible way. That's why what we do at Business Video is we do short, quick, 60 second videos which summarize your entire business. That's what we do. How many businesses here believe that your product and services really help your customers? How many, how many people? Raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Great. I'm looking to work with ten businesses. My goal would be to genuinely help you to communicate your idea from one to many. To see if I could be able to educate your customers, able to show if how your product works, how your service works. They could sign up or how, how they could be able to place an order or even generate an appointment or something like that. So I'll be really looking forward to catching up with you guys at the end of the event. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. All right. Okay, I know you from previous pitch. You can log on to it. Yes. You change the name. Good. Okay. Anyone else want to do a pitch? Because I want to quickly close it. So allowing you to yeah, come forward. Okay. There's two people. Okay. Introduce yourself. If you have a website, I can bring it up. Yes. So you bear Instagram. Sorry. Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I have this brand new iPad. Just look at it. You have a username for the Instagram? Yeah. So it's U R H E R B. U R H E R B. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
just trying to create some suspense. Are you sending the link and we'll put it up later on? Okay, just leave me the signal. You have a website. Sorry. Okay. You are H-E-R-D.com. You as in you? Yeah. Yeah. Rethinking the name now? <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay. So my name's Emma. Um, this is the company that I've set up with my business partner, um, Adina, who isn't here. Um, I wanted to ask you guys how many of you guys had a takeaway coffee this morning. Yeah. How many brought their own reusable coffee cup? Good work. And um, how many had a coffee inside? Yeah? And how many people who bought their own cup or had a coffee inside know the difference that you made to the environment this morning? Good work. So for the rest of the room who didn't put up their hand when uh, I asked about coffee cups, we are for you. Um, your herd is an eco-movement that is enabling people to live their most sustainable life. So living sustainably can uh, come across as being a very difficult thing to do. We all need to run away to a hippie commune and build wind farms. Um, actually, it's quite simple, and we're here to help give you the tips, um, give you the tools, and hopefully the motivation as well to live your most sustainable life. To see how your little steps that you take in your daily life can lead to a big change. Um, we have an Instagram platform at the moment, which is what I was trying to bring up to show you. Uh, we post inspirational pictures um, of nature, uh, coffee, it's always good, um, and animals, as well as a caption that will comment on uh, little tips that you can follow. Uh, we're setting up an online store. We currently have a number of suppliers and we'll be launching in uh, three weeks. Um, where I realised this was a bit of a last minute thing, but... All good, all good. Ooh. Little product promo. Um, you can buy uh, one of these, which is a Melbourne-made upper cup, which is a plastic uh, double-walled... Good. <laughs> Great. This is a, a plastic double-walled um, cup, so if you're a tea drinker, your hands don't get hot. Um, we also have uh, hand-blown glass cups made in Bondi, um, and we are bringing Keep Cup on board, which quite a few of you will probably also know as well. Um, 100,000 uh, one-use coffee cups are thrown away every single day in Australia. So um, by uh, following our Instagram, using your reusable coffee cup that we can um, provide to you, and then eventually when we become a tech startup, uh, and we need a number of developers and a number of other things, so there's a bit going on in the background. Um, all you guys who have bought one of these things through us will be the first to know about that development. Thanks. There you go. Okay, one last speech. Someone had it? Yep, okay. All right, well, I'm kind of disappointed I didn't get to stand there. <laughs> DJing a little bit. All right. Last pitch, I believe, I'll keep it short. So, I'll get right to it. My name is Maurice Schell, and I see two businesses existing in this world. Those that want to add value to society by improving the human condition, and then there's those that don't. Now, over the last 24 years of my life, I've lived on three of the six continents, and interacted and engaged with more people from different backgrounds, cultures, religions, ethnicities than I can count. And that's given me a pretty deep insight into what the human condition is like. And I've seen a lot of businesses out here today that are definitely working towards that. One of the examples. So anyways, I found a little design and consultancy businesses I call Design for Life. And Design for Life, we're all about adding value and helping you as an entrepreneur add value. And we do this by helping you step into the most important part of your business, which is your customers, and seeing your business through their eyes. We've got three parts to it. The first is defining your mindset around value. How do you define value? The second is how do your customers define value? And 
what do they want as value. We take those two elements, find the insights, identify what exactly needs to be done. We create a strategy, and here is what we do with you. Especially, we don't just give you a proposal. We then work with you on implementing that across the board, from your brand to your financials. So anyways, if you're interested, come see me after the uh, little pitch, the last one. But I do have one condition, which is I only want to work with people who really love what they do. If you love what you're doing, come talk to me. Thank you for listening. Talk to you soon. Exactly one hour after we started, so I don't think we should go anymore because people will get really cranky. So thanks for coming and thanks for listening and follow us on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter and all over the, the weeks out there. Thanks for coming and see you next month.